Alright guys, so um, today we'll talk about the um, growth hormone and it's what happens when there's um, excessive amounts of growth hormone. And um, yeah, so firstly we'll just start off with uh, familiarizing yourself with the sort of um, relevant anatomy. And this is sort of the brain here, so if you look at it there, now there's a couple of important regions here. Firstly, this is a hypothalamus and secondly, this is a pituitary gland. Now the pituitary gland is made out of two um, uh, two types of sort of um, areas. The first one is the anterior pituitary and the second one is the posterior pituitary. And the this area here is the hypothalamus like I said and this what this does is um, secrete releasing factors which will act on either the anterior pituitary or the posterior pituitary and cause a release of hormones synthesized in these areas. Um, to be released into the body. Now when I say that, um, the actual synthesis of these hormones, of the anterior pituitary um, hormones, actually does occur in the anterior pituitary. However, the posterior pituitary hormones, they're actually synthes synthesized in the hypothalamus, like you see these big cells here, and they actually travel down these nerve cells and are secreted here. So there's no actual synthesis that happens in the posterior pituitary. We'll um, talk a little bit more about that later. Now, um, we'll go through the anatomy um, quite quickly. This is the um, skull, um, and you're looking at it from the top down. So, um, it's been spliced in half there. Now, the important bit to look at is here is the sphenoid bone. This is in the pink. There we go. And uh, um, if you can visualize this, this pituitary gland here will actually sit in this region here. It's especially made for this region. It's a depression in the actual skull itself, and the area is called the cella turcica, which means um, Turkish saddle. So that actually um, resides in there, and so the hypothalamus and the infundibulum, um, there'll be superior extensions of um, of the pituitary gland, and they'll be like superior over here. Now, um, the other sort of important thing for a leave is that um, there'll be an area over here which is called the optic chiasm, is where the um, optic nerves will sort of cross. And um, this will be important because sometimes there are um, uh, sort of cancers or tumors of the pituitary gland which cause it to grow, 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 grow. And you can see here, this is optic chiasm here. They'll actually grow and Put pressure on the optic chiasm and so if you put pressure on the optic nerves it means that your vision is going to be affected and this is what we see sometimes um, in growth hormone excess because the growth hormone excess is being caused by um, tumors of the cells that um, secrete growth hormone yeah um, like we were saying before, how the anterior and posterior uh, pituitary are completely different. It's because of the embryology, and I won't spend too long on it. Um, but um, if you imagine sort of a fetus, um, there'll be the cranial side here, which means around the head, and the caudal side, which means the tail side. So the cranial side's been here um, magnified. And what we can see here is this area here. Uh, this is actually the um, stomatodium, which is the future mouth. And what happens is that the anterior pituitary is made from these cells, which is the oral ectoderm here, and it's a it's a superior um, upgrowth, if you like. And um, conversely, you get a um, a downgrowth of the um, of the diencephalon of the infundibulum or um, the neuroectoderm. And basically, um, what happens is that they'll meet, and um, this um, dark blue portion will be the future posterior pituitary, and this light blue will be the anterior pituitary. So you can see here, this is the um, hypophyseal diverticulum, also known as the Ratchkey's pouch, and that's an upgrowth. That's a description of the upgrowth going up there. And so they'll bind together, as you can see at the bottom. The um, Ratchkey's pouch will regress, and in its place will come the development of the sphenoid bone, which we talked about before. So that's acting as its um, protective function. And this sort of emphasizes how important 
um, the pituitary gland is because it's got its own sort of protection there. Now, um, <coughs> we'll quickly talk about the blood supply and then we'll cap it for this part. Um, the blood supply actually is um, from the for the anterior pituitary, it actually comes from what's called the superior hypophyseal artery. And this will innervate here the median em eminence and the infundibulum and innervates the wrong word but it will supply those areas and then it will go into a little primary um, plexus here so you can see here these are the um, sort of the nerve terminals of the hypothalamus and the ones that secrete the, the releasing factors for the anterior pituitary will actually release it into that primary plexus and so they will both um, go down with the blood supply into these um, hypo um, pituitary portal vessels and then it will go again into a secondary plexus which will supply the um, anterior pituitary and that's where all these releasing factors will um, act on the anterior pituitary cells to cause the release of the anterior pituitary hormones and after that's released it will go out into the circulation the venous circulation here by the anterior hypophyseal veins and conversely um, what happens in the posterior pituitary is that it's supplied by the um, uh, posterior uh, sorry the inferior uh, hypophyseal artery and it will be um, its venous drainage is the um, posterior hypophyseal veins so like I said before you see these uh, nerve terminals these don't these don't release their products at the primary plexus there they go all the way down into the posterior pituitary and this is only true for the posterior pituitary and we'll go back up and we'll just quickly go through those again so the superior hypophyseal artery that will do the anterior pituitary the um, um, they don't even have the, there we go, and the inferior hypophyseal artery that does the posterior pituitary.